The halo and horns effect is the tendency to see one good or bad thing in a person and think that everything is good or bad about that person. Let me say that again. It's the tendency to see one good or bad thing in a person and think everything is good or bad about that person. And I want to give you an example that not only helps you understand a little bit better about the manifestation of the halo horns effect, but something that you can do to begin the process of reducing its impact. And this example takes me back to 1994. It was my first year as a professor at Eastern Michigan University. I had just left uh, Penn State University in my doctoral program. I was at that point what we refer to as ABD. I had finished everything but my dissertation, did all my coursework, did my orals, did my written comps, all that kind of good stuff. And so I was able to actually go get a job and start making money and do all those good things that you can finally do when you get out of, uh, uh, out of school. Uh, and when I got there, there was a professor there, Dr. Calloway, who kind of took me under her wing and was a mentor and a good friend and I learned a great deal from. And I'll never forget a time when I was sitting in her office and we were talking about school stuff and I noticed there were papers on her desk. And I should point out that these were actually subjectively graded papers, meaning they weren't multiple choice tests. These were actually tests or, or, or uh, papers that would have been written that had to be graded subjectively. And I noticed that there were no names on any of the papers. All there were were student numbers. And I asked, why don't you have any names on the student papers? And I'll never forget what she said. She said, because I don't want my biases to impact how I grade these papers. Because if I see someone's name on that paper and I think of them as an A student, I'm going to grade their paper through the lens and expectation of an A student. On the other hand, if I see somebody else's name and I think of them as a C or D student, I'm going to grade their paper through the lens of expectation related to a C or D student. In other words, I may actually not grade what's there, I may grade what I expect to be there. And it was a very good example of thinking in advance about how the halo and horns effect can negatively impact the evaluation process. So she didn't want to know the student's name, she just wanted to be able to look at it, look at it as objectively as possible, and not let any of her preconceived notions about a particular student impact that.